Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we are celebrating the news that the 2017 Pokemon World Championship decks have been revealed. We're going to take a quick look at the decks. I'm going to give you deck lists for all four of them. We're going to look at the names. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. One thing just before we start, do remember that these decks are not tournament legal. The cards have different borders and they're signed, etc. You cannot play these in official tournaments. However, if you want to learn how to play with your friends, if you want to teach a friend how to play, if you want to use these as fun decks to play around with, they are still great and you get a pin badge. So the one nobody should be surprised about, Diego Casaraga's first place Gardevoir deck has been printed, of course it is. I mean, how are we going to have a World Championship 2017 deck without Gardevoir? And he won the whole tournament, so I think at this stage, it's pretty obvious we were going to get his deck. It was definitely going to happen. In terms of his deck, here is the list. It looks fairly standard. Because, and this should not surprise a bunch of people, we kind of used his deck as a basis. So an awful lot of people basically have started off with Diego Casaraga's deck and from there built their own decks. We see that he is playing one of the Gallades because Gallade's brilliant, gives you a fighting type attacker. Got the brilliant Premonition ability that allows you to rearrange the top five cards of your deck. We see that he's playing a 2-2 Octillery line, which makes perfect sense because, of course, Octillery is brilliant for drawing extra cards, especially after you rearrange them with Gallade. He's not playing a Lowland Vulpix, which is the one thing that I personally would really change about his list. And weirdly, he's playing one of the Ancient Origin routes because, uh, maybe, who knows, why not? Why not, ladies and gentlemen? Why not? I mean, the funny thing is, the cards are exactly the same. They've just got different artwork. Honestly, I would bet money that he just couldn't find four routes and had to borrow one off somebody. That's where I'd go with that. We've got four double colourless energy, two Guzma, one Lysander, etc, etc. Great deck, and if you want to start playing Gardevoir but you haven't got the deck yourself, this is a great place to start. The other deck that would have been a great bet to actually have printed was Naoto Suzuki's deck, which he is called Glycidor. It, it's basically Garboda Galisopod. Diego Casaraga's, by the way, was called Infinite Force, which is the name of Gardevoir's attack, which is a little bit lame, if I'm perfectly honest. Sorry, Diego, I went there. Now, this is a deck that absolutely nobody saw coming, coming into the day. We all thought Galisopod would be good. We all thought Garboda would be good. But it was only the Japanese people like Naoto Suzuki and... Former world champion and his friend Shintaro Ito that actually brought Garboda Galisopod as its own deck. Now, of course, you've got Galisopod with first impression. 120 for one energy is amazing. And then, of course, you've got the Tapu Koko that gives free retreat. We play the Wimpod from Burning Shadows because turn one you wimp out to a Tapu Koko. So you can retreat for free and pop a Galizopod up the following turn. And then you've got a 2-2 split of Garboda. Two of the Ability Locking Garboda and two of the Trash Alanch Garboda. One to block abilities for things like Greninja, Volcanian, Gardevoir, etc. And one to punish your opponent for playing too many item cards. We all kind of knew that Garboda was going to be a huge presence at the 2017 World Championships. And it was... It doesn't surprise us it came in second. The one thing I would say is that if you watch that World Championship final, and you should be able to still find it at twitch.tv slash Pokemon, or it should be on the Pokemon YouTube channel, to be honest. If I can find a link on the official Pokemon channel, I'll pop it down in the description. Great final, good one to watch. It could have gone either way. And I really like the fact that it was actually both of the finals decks that got printed. Because the thing is, Pokemon want to honour the people that won Worlds, and it did well in Worlds. 
But they also want to make sure that when a kid goes into a shop, these World Championship decks are often what people use to learn the game. They're often what people use to get into the game. We don't want four Gardevoir decks. Heck, we don't even want two Gardevoir decks. We want a nice mix. And with Diego Casaraga winning with Gardevoir, a brand new deck, and Naoto Suzuki coming second with Golisopod Garboda, a brand new deck, it shouldn't surprise anyone that both of these made it in. And the third one, again, we probably could have seen this one coming. Zachary Bakari's Alolan Ninetales deck, with which he won the Senior Division at the World Championships. Senior Division Champion, not one of the other two decks from Masters. It makes perfect sense that this one would be printed. And it's all about Alolan Ninetales GX. And I just want to bring your attention to the name of this deck. Ice Path FTW. Now in 10, 15 years time when FTW ceases to be an initialism for, for the win, this is going to look stupid. Right now, however, this is a wonderful name. One of my very favorite World Championship deck names that I've seen. It is crazy, crazy good. It amuses me greatly. And Alolan Volpix was a deck that we all thought could be quite good at the World Championships. But it wasn't a deck that we actually thought, oh my god, it's going to crush, it's going to be amazing, it's going to win. We just thought it would be a bit of fun, something to play around with. And it's all based around the Lola Ninetales. And if you look at the deck, we don't really have any other main attackers. Blizzard Edge 160 for free energy, discard two. Now, of course, we play double colorless here. Firstly, for Ice Blade and Ice Path. But secondly, so that you can use Blizzard Edge to discard two energy. But you discard the double colorless. And then next turn, pop a double colorless and Blizzard Edge again, etc, etc. And that really is about your only attacker. We play Octillery here just to get some more cards, give a little bit of consistency to the deck. There's a Tapu Coco because Flying Flip is amazing, but it's not an every game kind of attack. Tapu Lele comes in for the Wonder Tag. And then what I really loved about this deck list, and what makes this deck list really fun for me, is that there were two cards in here that are just here to act as techs against other decks. Your Suda Wudu reduces your opponent's bench to four. It is literally just a tech against Rayquaza. That was a really bad matchup for this. Then you've got Promo Giratina that turns off the abilities of all of your opponent's break Pokemon. And it's just there to take away Greninja's break giant water shuriken. It's as simple as that. It's a great deck and I absolutely love it. And then, of course, we get to the fourth deck printed that I don't think anyone really saw coming. Although, if you looked at it, it makes perfect sense. It is, in fact, junior runner-up, Kabu Fakase, and I'm sorry about the pronunciation there, which is almost certainly terrible, with Golisopod Decidueye. Here's the thing. Tobias Stromdahl actually won juniors, but he won it with Gardevoir, which we already had printed. And then Mikasi Hatsugawa of Japan, again, apologies for the pronunciation, came second, but came second, but again, using that Gardevoir deck that we don't really want to print, because of course, well, it's, it's already been printed, it's been printed as Diego Casaraga's deck, so we end up with Golisopod Decidui. And we've already seen Golisopod, we know what it does, we had it printed with Nalso Suzuki. But it adds in Decidui and its Feather Arrow ability that allows you to pop two damage counters anywhere you like on the field. Now, of course, back then we had Forest of Giant Plants, which meant you could evolve it up whenever you like, which also really helped with Golisopod, because you could evolve up Golisopod whenever you liked. It meant you could have a turn one first impression if you went second. So you start with a Wimpod with Wimpow, you evolve a Golisopod on your bench, retreat, boom, 120 on turn one, which, quite frankly, is redonkulously good, ladies and gentlemen. And then we've got an Espeon in there as well with Miraculous Shine. Allows you to devolve your opponent's Pokemon down one stage, which is quite nice. Use stuff like First Impression and Feather Arrow. Bring their HP down. And then you just 
devolve them, and then, you know, 230 HP Gardevoir that evolved using Rare Candy, devolve it with Espeon, goes down to a 60 HP Routes, and now it gets KO'd because, well, Routes gets KO'd a lot more easily. Three Feather Arrows on a Gardevoir does very little. Three Feather Arrows on a Routes gets a KO. So this was a bit of a surprise, but it makes perfect sense. As a side note, the other semi-finalist was a Gardevoir Xerneas deck in Juniors. So you kind of had to print a Juniors deck. But the only Junior in the top four that wasn't playing Gardevoir was Kabu, who was playing Golisopod Decidueye. So it had to be done. And he went ahead and called his deck Samurai Sniper. Which seems a, a little bit aggressive for a Pokemon deck. But I like it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the World Championship decks. They'll be coming out soon. They're great to learn how to play with your friends or to teach your friends to play. But I must tell you again, they are not tournament legal. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think. Tell me if there are any decks that you thought should have been printed that weren't. Tell me which of these decks you want to run out and buy. Tell me what you think. Go nuts in the comment section. But be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. That's where the live action happens. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc., you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. A new bonus podcast up this week is really good but then again i would say that by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching and actually just before we go huge shout out to sebastian who popped these up on verbank city on facebook shout out to him he's the one that posted them up thank you very much for watching look after yourselves until next time my name's ross and you've been listening to ptcg radio